Greetings, YouTubers. This is a video I'm going to be calling Hegel. What do angels think about him? <clears throat> and here's the book. It's Hegel's Phenomenology of Spirit, translated by A.V. Miller. And here we go. This is going to be an interview with my angel, angels on what they think of Hegel. And I have no idea how this is going to turn out. And there may be some times when I need to kind of slow down in order to get the uh, message from the angels. But we'll see how it goes. I'm pretty much a professional uh, musician, especially when it comes to improvisation. And none of this is going to be planned. So I'm just going to see how it evolves and develops over time. So <clears throat> I've got uh, about 36 angels here. Uh, within me, and I don't know which one was going to um, come to me, but it's going to be, Gra I just got a message, it's going to be Angel Grouchy, who by the way is never grouchy, and what, what she's going to do is uh, introduce Hegel, um, <clears throat> go to the introduction, or the con table of contents, and I'm just going to read, she wants the preface, uh, just a table of contents. So you have the preface on scientific cognition, you have an introduction, you have consciousness, you have self-consciousness, you have reason Hegel talks about, you have a, a section called the spirit, you have religion, and you have absolute knowing. <clears throat> Those are the major sections of this book. So now she, well, she some of these um, terms I'm looking at in the preface uh, have to do, well, first of all, let me kind of calm down just a little bit because I feel like I'm doing most of the talking and this is going to be an angel interview. So I'll take a deep breath, which I normally don't do because uh, I don't normally do these kinds of videos, but we're going to see how it works out. <clears throat> All right, so angels asked me to now go to 272 in the book. <clears throat> and this is Angel Aura asking me to go to 272. And by the way, Angel Aura represents uh, fun in our little um, grouping. <clears throat> and now she wants me to talk about the community here because Hegel, this is from his own section called Spirit, and I'm going to read the first three sentences. The community, the superior law whose validity is openly apparent, has its real vitality in the government as that in which it has an individual form. Government is the reality of spirit that is reflected into itself, the simple self of the entire ethical substance. This simple power does, does indeed allow the family to expand into its constituent members and to give to each part an enduring being, and a being for self of its own. <clears throat> so I'm asking uh, Angel Kelly now what she thinks of this, and she's uh, focusing on the idea of the community. Um, and then she's focusing on the idea that she wants to talk about the idea of law, here in relation to the um, government um, and how that affects the community. Um, this isn't something I'm much interested in myself, but since Kelly's, I'm, I'm leaving it up to Kelly to uh, run with this for a little while. So the idea of government, um, She's thinking of like the word govern 
and governor. And so uh, in Don Quixote by Cervantes, Miguel de Cervantes, <clears throat> Sancho Panza is going to become a governor of his own island. Uh, that's his hopes and that's his hope and dream, which he finally gets um, uh, to do, to, to f have fulfilled. And um, okay, if there's that she gave me this memory of, and then she's looking through the text. Um, she likes this word ethics, but she also says that she's reminded of um, a book by J. Hillis Miller called The Ethics of Reading. And then she, remem she remembers a quote by Harold Bloom who said, there is no ethics to reading. J so that pretty much meant like J. Hillis Miller was wrong. Now she's going to the idea of the spirit and the reality of spirit that is reflected into itself, the simple self of the entire ethical substance. Okay. I don't know whether it'd be a good idea to say, hey, Kelly, what do you think of this or this term Hegel's using, the spirit? She says that is pretty good, but she wants to read it now. Um, starting here, this simple power does indeed allow the family to expand into its constituent members and to give each part an enduring being and being for self of its own. So I could ask her if Hegel if she likes this idea that Hegel segments um, uh, these parts of the community into family and self and government and what she thinks about that. She says she thinks that's tough. So Kelly's already responding to um, the power, this, this simple power that doesn't indeed allow the family to expand into the constituent members. So now Angel Valerie wants me to go to page 308. So that's what I'm doing. And right here, um, she's gonna have me read three sentences from page 308 in the section Hegel titled as Spirit. <clears throat> For it is the real existence of the pure self as self, in speech, self-consciousness, qua independent, separate individuality, comes as such into existence, so that it exists for others. Otherwise, the I, this pure I, is non-existent. It is not there. In every other expression, it is immersed in a reality and is in a shape from which it can withdraw itself. It is reflected back onto itself from its action as well as from its physiognomic expression and dissociates itself from such an imperfect existence in which there is always at once too much as too little letting itself remain lifeless behind. <clears throat> Language, however, contains in its purity, it alone expresses the I, the I itself. <clears throat> very, very interesting choice by the angel. And angel or, or Tiferetak is, is telling me that this is a, actually a, pretty much the, the core of Hegel and she really, really likes it, especially the idea that um, as the I, the, the self comes into existence, it's, it's because it exists for others. So um, this kind of content um, is a term, or it could also be content. Um, it reminds me, I, sh I guess that'd be okay. Well, maybe, maybe I can wait on um, explaining my, my idea of content. But 
Uh, Angel or or Teapot says it's really really good, or really good. What we just read from Hegel, um, and then she wants me to go to page three hundred one, <clears throat> which I'm doing. And Kabbalah wants me to do one sentence. Angel Kabbalah asked me to do one sentence in this interview with Hegel. Uh, with the angels on Hegel. <clears throat> and here it goes. We have to consider how, in the first instance, these two members are represented within pure consciousness as thoughts or as having only an implicit being and also how they are represented in actual consciousness as having an objective existence. <clears throat> they say that, uh, well, this is Threekbot saying this, that she says that this is kind of like what we're doing, exactly what we're doing right now by this angel interview, having a kind of um, uh, objective existence um, <clears throat> from these thoughts, having only, that have, um, that come from pure consciousness and this uh, implicit being and how they are represented in actual consciousness as having an ob objective existence. And now Angel or or Tifratat asked me to go to um, page 111 and she wants me to kind of scan it, to look over it for a second here. Um, I wish kind of I had like somebody asking me, hey, Angel, what do you think, hey, or, or T for thought, what do you think of the word meanings? So I'll just, I'll just drop that. What do you think of the word meanings? In, as in the sentence, the notion of this, its unity and its duplication embraces many and varied meanings. <clears throat> Well, another one of my angels, Angel Marion, um, says that if I look at the previous sentence where it says, um, self-consciousness exists in and for in itself when and by the fact that it exists for another, that is, it exists only in being acknowledged. <clears throat> she She says that Hey, poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world, says, well, she says that because Shelley said that in his defense of poetry at the very last sentence. Because um, Shelley's talking about them being unacknowledged, and here what's being acknowledged is um, self consciousness existing in and for itself by the fact that it, it, it so exists for another, which goes back to that one quote we were reading just a little while ago, the for, about the for itself, for others, uh, for itself be, being the self for others. That is, it exists only in being acknowledged. <clears throat> so back to the word, uh, on one hundred and on on page one hundred and eleven, we're gonna go with now this quote. Now this movement of self consciousness in relation to another self consciousness. <clears throat> and one thing I can do here is what something that Penelope asked me to do as I was reading that just now. She says substitute the word the word self consciousness for angel. So now this movement of an angel in relation to another angel has in this way been represented as the action of one angel. But this action of the one has itself the double significance of being both its own action and the action of the other as well. Makes sense to me. I don't know, like, 
Um, well, the, this is this is Angel Ariel saying we're good. So to keep going, uh, not to get uh, to where I overthink what I was just going to say. All right. So as far as that's concerned, in this book, Hegel's Phenomenology of Spirit, the oh, Phenomenology of Spirit. Um, I'll see what the angels want to do next because it's supposed to be kind of an angel interview. Um, let's see, I could say, hey, Angel Bertha, so far, how's it going? She says it's going good. She says um, that she wants to read, though, and she's agreeing with or or Tifer. I thought that that's what they want to do. For how long? Two more minutes? All right. <clears throat> so, 112 is the num page number that Aura or Tiferet Tata, I believe, chose. Yes. So now we're on 112 from his t chapter title, um, or his section here called Con Self Consciousness. And we're going with this one. Wait, right here. We're going for two sentences, and then we're going to end it on a nice note. The middle term is self-consciousness, which splits into the extremes. And each extreme is this exchanging of its own determinateness and an absolute transition into the opposite. Although, as consciousness, it does indeed come out of itself, yet though out of itself, it is as at the same time kept back within itself, is for itself, and the self outside it is for it. I think we've pretty much like covered like basically a good summary of Hegel by just those quotes that the angels picked out. And this is a kind of a thick book here. So, I mean, Hegel has more to say about reason and culture and history and all. But I like those ones about being like, they say that, the angels say it's Tob, so I'm going to stop here. But that, that's, that's my improvisation with the angels as with an interview concerning Hegel. And they say that he's pretty good to read.